Hi, what's new in version 1.8 of WordPress Content Crawler? In this video, I'll answer this question in detail. There are lots of new features. To introduce new WooCommerce options, I need to create options for an e-commerce site. Let me quickly configure some main options for eBay. Time to time, I will be fast-forwarding some parts. When fast-forwarding, a fast-forward icon will be shown at the bottom left corner of the video. For the plugin to show WooCommerce options, the post type should be selected as product. This can be set in general settings. Let's just overwrite general settings here and publish the settings. The WooCommerce options are now available under Post tab. For convenience, the settings are designed in a way that they look like the settings available in product page of WooCommerce. Let me set the regular price. The price needs to be a number, so I should remove the texts from the found value. You can easily do this by using the options box, which is another new feature. It has several options such as find your place, JSON parsing, calculations, templates and notes. Let's remove the text from the price by using find your place options. When testing, we can see both modified and unmodified results. Let's also increase the price a little bit using the calculation options. There are a few attributes in the product page. We can add those as well. Let's remove the columns at the end of the attribute names. Let me quickly find a CSS selector for the values of the attributes. I'm going to remove unnecessary white space and some text from the values as well. Let's go to the tester and test the configurations. WooCommerce product details are shown in their own section in the test results. The price and the attributes look ok. I'm going to add a featured image to the product as well. In addition, let's retrieve the categories from the target page. This is another new feature coming with version 1.8. We can add the categories hierarchically and remove the category set in the category map option. However, make sure you select a category suitable for the selected post type, which is product. So we need to select a WooCommerce category in the category map. Let's crawl the product manually and see if it will be saved as we want. I'll select a random WooCommerce category because it does not matter since the categories will be retrieved from the target site. The product has been saved as we want. The price is in pound, but it is configured in the WooCommerce plugin settings, so everything has been saved properly.
Starting from this version, you will see warnings when there's something wrong. Let's see a few examples. There's an unexpected character in the CSS selector. Regular expression does not have an ending delimiter. The value should be numeric so that we can use it in a formula. The value isn't a valid JSON string. The file cannot be moved to a folder outside of the Uploads folder of WordPress. The warnings are shown in the tester page as well. They are available in the Visual Selector tool too. You can now save taxonomies. Let me just quickly save a post using previously configured settings. Now let's change the format of the post. There are several post formats available in WordPress. For this example, let's set the type as chat. We need to write the name of the taxonomy and its value. Let's recrawl the post and check out its format. There's a chat icon shown next to the post title, so we successfully set the post format. When saving files, alt and title attributes of the file are automatically saved. They are added both as attributes of the HTML elements and as details of the saved media. As it is shown in the test results, the title and alternate texts are retrieved from the target page automatically. Let's crawl the post and check out the SRC set attributes. SRC set attributes values are set. These are only set when the alternative sizes of the images are available. Alt and title attributes are set as well. These values are available in the details of the saved media too. You can now save post slugs, in other words, permalinks, which are the name of the post in the URL of the post. Let me create a few shortcodes to demonstrate how you can create different post slugs. Let's just write a selector for an element so that the options in the options box are applied. Now let's use the shortcuts to define the template of the slug. This is the old post slug. The slug will not be changed when recrawling a post. 
So let's delete the post and crawl it again. The slug has been created as defined in its template. Previously, navigating between options in different tabs required going to top, clicking the tab name, and then scrolling down to the option. Now, by enabling fixing tabs and content navigation, you can easily navigate. When switching tabs, previous location will be restored. Testing the configurations when the target site is slow takes too much time. To reduce the time, you can just enable caching under the main tab. This will greatly reduce the time required to conduct the tests. You can also invalidate the caches anytime you want. By invalidating, you can get a fresh version of the response. When you define a custom shortcode, it will be available as a button, which you can click to copy the shortcode. The buttons will be shown where they are available to be used. You can now quick save the site settings. This way is dramatically faster. A selector has an invalid character in it. Let's fix it and update the settings using the quick save button. In this version, you can extract values from JSON strings. Here, the target site has a JSON string from which I want to extract an information. Let's write the selector for it first. Now, let's enable JSON parsing in the options box. You can read the explanation to learn how to use the values from the parsed JSON. Let's get the page URL from the JSON. To make it a little bit complicated, I'll use find replace options. I'll add the target value under another key. You can use dot notation to describe the path of the target value. Let's do it. Let's make it more complicated. As you might know, showing iframes from unknown sources causes security risk. Hence, WordPress filters iframe elements when saving the post. As a fix, you can use shortcodes to show the iframe elements. In this version, you can do this by just checking a checkbox. Here, there is a YouTube video shown within an iframe element. Let's convert it to a shortcode. The shortcode shows iframes from sources that are allowed by you. You can define the allowed domains from the general settings. Here, I mistakenly type a wrong domain. Let's see what happens. The iframe element is converted to a shortcode. Let's save the post and check out its content.
There is no video because the source is not allowed. Let's fix it. Now the video is shown as expected. Manual crawling tool has been redesigned. It has many more features. You can enter many post URLs. Moreover, you can enter category URLs from which the post URLs can be collected. You can make the tool crawl several posts at the same time. You can also recrawl the post from within the manual crawling tool. In addition to this, if you do not want to crawl the post right now, you can add them to the database so that the plugin can crawl them automatically using the defined scheduling options. The HTML manipulation options defined in the site settings are applied when testing other settings, even if you do not save the settings. Let's see a few examples. This site has a piece of code that makes the crawler fail to parse the HTML. Let's find it and remove it using find and replace in raw HTML option. When the code is removed, the HTML is parsed without any problem. Now, since the manipulation option is applied when testing other options, the title is found without any problem. Other manipulation options are applied as well. Let's remove the class we used in the CSS selector and try to find the title. The title is not found because the class doesn't exist since we removed it. Let's add another class and see if it is reflected in the test results. I'm gonna manipulate the HTML a little bit more for demonstration purposes.
With the manipulation options applied in all tests, you can test in a more robust way. You can now use delimiters and modifiers in regular expressions. Let's see an example. Let's say I want to remove twice here. When not using regex, it needs to be entered in a case sensitive way so that it can be removed. Since we can use delimiters and modifiers in regex, we can remove it in a case insensitive way using the I modifier. This version adds find and replace in raw HTML option. You can use this option to manipulate the raw response text retrieved from the target website. The manipulation is applied before the text is parsed to HTML. Therefore, you can fix the problems that prevent HTML parsing. Here, we see an empty page, although we know that the page should not be empty since the target site has a static HTML page with content in it. I'm gonna hit the test button of find and replace in raw HTML option to see if there is something wrong. While the raw content length has 180,000 characters, the parsed HTML has only 12,000 characters. There should be something wrong. Let's see. The HTML code ended in a place it should not end. Let's find the last line in the target site's source code. There's an opening and closing HTML tag, which mislead the HTML parser. So, let's remove it and check if it works that way. Now the crawler HTML has 180,000 characters as well. We fixed the problem. We can now use the visual selector as usual. Using the file options box, you can rename, move, and copy the files. You can also define several templates for file name, media title, description, caption, and alternate text where you can use any shortcode. Let me change the name of the file using find replace options. Now let's define the folders to which the files are saved and copied. Let's define a few templates using the shortcodes. Let's examine the values in the tester.
It is now possible to select custom post categories in the category map as well as assigning values to custom taxonomies. I installed WordPress Movie Library plugin to demonstrate how these features can be used. I created two collections. The collections defined in this plugin are actually categories of the custom post type, which is Movie. I selected the custom post type in the plugin's general settings by overriding them. As you can see, there is currently no collection shown in the category map. Now, let's go to the general settings and define the custom post category. We need to write the taxonomy name of the custom category. It can be retrieved from the URL. Let's refresh the page and check out the available categories again. Now we can select the collections. I also want to assign genres and actors of a movie. I've written the CSS selectors that find the genres and the actors of the movie. WordPress Movie Library plugin stores the genres under Genre Taxonomy. I simply found the name of the taxonomy by examining the URL of Genres page of WordPress Movie Library plugin. I did the same for the actors. I have entered these taxonomy names to Custom Taxonomy Value Selectors option of the plugin. Let's test the settings. Everything looks OK. Let's save a post manually to check if it works. The values are assigned to the movie as we wanted. Source code of some websites are encoded with a character set that needs to be converted to UTF-8 so that the characters can be shown properly. The plugin makes it possible to do so by checking a single checkbox. Let's see an example. The characters are not properly shown. Let's try to use UTF-8. Now, the invalid characters are removed. We do not want this. Let's try to convert the character set to UTF-8. The characters are now properly shown. I hope you like these new features. Please let me know if there are other features you think they should be in the plugin. Thanks for using WordPress Content Crawler.